What's up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. If you missed any one of our past interviews with amazing guests like future Hall of Famer and pound for pound best fighter in the world, UFC flightweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. It's another day that the opera to go out there and uh, test my skill. To award winning producer, director, and actor Orlando Jones. Orlando, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm good, brother. How you doing? And all the other interesting guests we've had on. Joining us today is director and writer David Ferrier. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show. MMA legend Chael Sonnen joins us today. Keep listening to your show. This is great. Thanks, my friend. Just subscribe to us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. And while you're there, please like, review, and rate us, friends. It helps so much. We also have a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the show. Just visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and see how you can get all of our interviews ad-free and before anyone else and how you can get your business or company spotlighted on the show. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash mikemercado2333. And if you would like to see what we're up to behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, mikemercado2333. Thanks for listening and all the support. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all of Nicole's work at typingwindtipsy.wordpress.com. You can follow Alex on Twitter at Mercado21Alex. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, MikeMercado2333. What is up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. On this episode of Typey When Tipsy with Nicole Mancha, we go into the vaults and grab an episode of Pizza Night with Nikki and Mike about expectations and friendship, relationships, and everything in between. It's a really good one. So while Nicole is working on a cool project for you guys for the next few episodes of Typey When Tipsy, why don't you go back to our archives and check out this really fun episode? And while you're at it, like, rate, review, and share us anywhere you get your favorite podcast at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube at Mercado Airwaves Network. You can follow me on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, mikemercado2333. Nicole's on Instagram and on Twitter at Typing When Tipsy. You can check out all our interviews ad-free and before anybody else with athletes and celebrities at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. And a huge thank you to Much Art Design for powering us here at the Mercado Airwaves Network. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this episode of Typing When Tipsy with Nicole Mancha. Enjoy the show. What is going on, friends? Welcome into Pizza Night with Nick and Mike. I'm your host, Mike Mercado, with the lovely, the beautiful, the one, the only, the lady of Mercado Airwaves. Nicole Mancha, how are you? Good. How is everything with you? Everything is everything. And I'm excited to get into this subject. It is something I think a lot of people deal with when it comes to dealing with your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your boss, your coworkers expectations when someone meets them when they don't live up to them whether you set them too high too low whatever the case may be nicole broadly before we really dig deep into this uh what do you think about this type of subject how important is it to tackle whether it's within yourself or with somebody else about um you know setting expectations or are dealing with expectations i think it's something you need to know yourself i think As people, we expect a lot just in general in life. And that's like you said, with any kind of relationship you have, whether it be with coworkers, your significant other, your parents, whatever it may be, you have expectations from get. And I feel like it's part of the way we're programmed. Maybe it's because of how we grew up or how we learned things. There's that feeling of this person should do this because... And part of the reason I wanted to do this topic was because I was listening to a TED Talk and they were talking about how expectations can destroy relationships. And I had never heard that before. And once they got into it, I was like, I've never thought of that and never realized how detrimental it can be. And I think it's a very interesting topic when it comes to analyzing relationships with people Mm -hmm. and within yourself i think just as important of understanding you know let's say for example us like the expectations you have of me it's just as important to understand the expectations i have of myself because that's how you're able to kind of mold yourself build yourself and you know allow certain things to happen so why don't we go ahead and let's tackle um expectations for your parents okay first of all because i think that one's a, a little bit of a easier subject just because 
I think as you get older, you realize how tough their job was. Yeah. So you realize that they couldn't always do certain things that you wanted them to do or that you thought maybe they weren't as, you know, hands-on or you didn't, they didn't give you the slack or they didn't give you what you wanted. Right. But I guess as you get older, your parents, the, the ex, that's the one expectation that just seems to completely do a 180. Well, that's the thing. I think expectations with your parents are – it's so different because the dynamic is so different because as you grow as a person, as you kind of fill those roles that they filled at one point, like the when you always talk about how you're now the head of your household – now when something goes bump in the night, it is your job to do it opposed to your dad. It gives you that kind of reality check of, oh, my God, he was doing this for years. Like your dad had three kids by the time he was our age. Right. You know what I mean? So like those kind of expectations, kind of knowing what your parents should do for you or what you think they should do for you and what they're not responsible for for you anymore. Um, you know, we're adults. We have our own place. We have our own things. You know, my mom always will text and be like, what do you guys want from the store? Like, I'm going to Costco and I can grab something for you. It's no big deal. Do I think I should have those expectations? Probably not because I'm an adult. I can do it myself. But I think those things are a little bit smaller opposed to people who feel entitled to. That's the word, isn't it? Yeah. Entitlement to to expectations. So, you know, for for your example, it's like you – you expect your mom to love you, but you don't, ex- you don't, um, you know, it, it's, I don't expect her to bend over backwards, backwards and every give you $2,000 on the, on a whim. Right. She, you know, they, they worked really hard to get us to this point to be able for us to kind of take care of ourselves. So it shouldn't be part of their job to then continue to have to take care of us. You know what I mean? Like I, we know people who their parents help them, you know, put the down payment for their house or condo or whatever it may be. That's wonderful. That that's not an expectation though. That shouldn't be an expectation. It's great. If your parents can do that for you, it's great for people whose parents are able to pay for their weddings and you know, all those things. But some people actually feel like that's how it should be. Like you are my parent. You decided to have children. So this is what I deserve from you. And I think that's kind of where as you get older, you start to realize, no, I don't deserve any of that. It's just a blessing my parents are able to do so for me. And I think with those type of situations, especially with like expectations and entitlement and everything, I think the one consequence or lesson learned is gratitude. Right. Like you're grateful for, you know, if you were like like my family, my parents paid for all our sports. Yeah. And like club sports, like you know on, on your side of the family, all the, the nephews and nieces, all the stuff they do. Yeah. That's a lot of money. <laughs> and not just financially, it's a lot of uh time. Like it's it's yeah. you you're thinking like this is Alex and I had this conversation. Shout out to uh the good brothers you can listen to our last episode that came out yesterday. Check that out. Plug, 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 plug. in the entire <laughs> network. That's that's how pros do it. The the big thing we were talking about is like you're sacrificing certain things. You have to sacrifice, you know, time, sleep, money for growth and for yeah. development. And I think that's just as important, not just with like a brand or with work, but with, you know, when you're a, a parent and I, it's just, I think all of that comes in together when you're, when you're learning as specifically with, you know, your parents. And I'm not saying everybody has as good, great of parents as we did. No. So I like, agree. that's, that's the big thing too. It's like, we know people who have very strenuous relationships with their parents and, you know, we, we can't understand that. Right. Like we can't understand that type of like their expectations, their entitlement, their their gratitude is completely different right. than the way you and I would look at it and the way other people would look at it. There's there's uh, levels to exactly. it. Exactly. No, I agree. I think that. But, you know, it's like I said about the expectations and um, things like that with your parents. It just I think that I appreciate my parents more when it comes to expectations. When it comes to expectations. If you hear that, I don't think – I don't know if you can actually pick it up, but Nicole's laughing because Mowgli, our dog, is walking around sneezing because he has no – Because he's a good boy. He has no recording etiquette. He's you were saying? Boy. Anyways. Yeah. Um, but I feel like those expectations, when you start to realize that they shouldn't be expectations and that they should – you know, it's just part of why your parents are so great is – it it, the dynamic just changes so significantly as you get older and it really puts things into perspective especially when we're paying bills trying to figure out how we're going to buy a house you know all those things and i'm like wow they did this 
and they raise kids and they continue to help. It's something that they do because they want to, not because they that we expect them to do it. And what's interesting about the expectations and the relationship you have with your siblings yes. kind of is is in a way very symbiotic with your with the relationship with your parents, but it completely is also you talk about full full uh full realm of the of the spectrum like yeah. it's just full gambit like there's some people who you know i expect certain things from my brothers when it comes to the way they talk to people the way they they act right. like just certain things but i think that's what a, like something like that like what do you, is that an expectation is that entitlement like i can't think of another word for sure. it but like when you believe somebody should act a certain way like i don't i don't need you to bring me a million dollars, but I expect you to be polite to people. Right. I think expect is a good way to describe it. It would be like, you know, them coming, like I'll use your brothers cause they come over. You know what I mean? My siblings are in the city, so it's not that commute's not there. Um, but if they come in the house, you don't expect them to ignore me or ignore Mowgli or, you know what I mean? Like you do expect to be polite. To that be, courtesy, like a courtesy. Yeah. yeah. Like the courtesy, the, acknowledgement that this is not just your house, that there are certain rules and guidelines that you have for your own house that may not line up with those that your parents have. You know, it's, you know, your schedule is a little bit different than mine. You're off during the week. I'm off on the weekend. So when they're here, you know, the idea of, Hey, you guys are more than welcome to come over, but I need you to keep in mind, you may not start work until noon tomorrow. Nicole's leaving the house at 7 o'clock in the morning. So we can't be obnoxious and loud and yelling because that's not fair to her. So there are certain expectations you set up. And I think with our siblings, we're harder on them. I mean, it's an interesting. you know, it, yeah. it's funny because my, my mom and I, actually, and I were talking about this yesterday, how my dad isn't as hard on his siblings as my mom is as on hers. And I yeah. feel the same thing with you. Like you're definitely not as hard on your brothers. Like there's a, it's so much love all the time and that's not a bad thing, but opposed to how I am with my siblings where I'm like, you better buck up or shut up because but I think that's a, the, also the same as personality though. Like I don't, I don't want to be my brother's father. No, I, I know. I'm not saying you want to be your, your siblings mother, but like my personality doesn't, doesn't make me, want to be confrontational with them i don't look to 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 me there's certain people in this world you don't argue with like even you in some in some level like you're in a different tier but like when it comes to arguments like i'm not supposed to argue with my brothers i'm gonna argue with you i'm gonna disagree with you more often than not in a more personal level in the sense of like day-to-day -day living but like when you don't see your brothers or like – it's like not seeing a, a dog. It's like there's no reason <laughs> to have bad an, anim, animosity with yeah. with siblings, especially when you're close with them because like that's supposed to be one version of escape. Just like your significant other is, the, is an escape from, from them and from your other family. It's like there is certain people you don't really want to have that type of – No, and I agree with that. Know? But I think it's just – you know. Here's the thing. Not that you wouldn't tell your brother if you... Either well, I'll tell brothers. them off. I tell them off on yeah, the air yeah, all the yeah. time. Yeah, But I'm like, not that you yeah. wouldn't tell them like you thought they were wrong. But you would say it, I feel, sometimes in a nicer tone because you want to be that big brother. You want to be there to give them that advice that you... Right. And there's you know no mistake I mean? that they've made that I'm not... I, have, right. I haven't made. Like, Opposed to like my relationship with my younger siblings where I have no problems, no holds barred, like... It is a rip the band aid situation, like rip it quick, and yeah. you know what I mean. And it's harsh at first, but I mean it in a good way. Yeah, right. I you mean, know what that's... I mean. Like it's all like we talked about like last week. It's just all about how you say it, and the, but I do have higher expectations for my siblings than I would for like my friends. You come into my house, you know you should take off your shoes. I shouldn't have to tell you this because we all live together and you know how the house goes. I'm not going to do that to my friends. Sure. You know what I mean? Like I think that's really interesting. You know what? Why don't we take a quick break and let's get into, uh, I think what a lot of people want to talk about is that type of scenario, but with your friends and a significant other. Yeah. Uh, you're here with Nicole Mancha, Mike Mercado on Pizza Night with Nikki and Mike on Mercado Airwaves. Stay tuned.
Mercado Airwaves is brought to you by supporters at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all of Nicole's work at typingwindtipsy.wordpress.com. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, mikemercado2333. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all of Nicole's work at typingwindtipsy.wordpress.com. You can follow Alex on Twitter at Mercado21Alex. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, mikemercado2333. What's up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. If you missed any one of our past interviews with amazing guests like future Hall of Famer and pound for pound best fighter in the world, UFC flightweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. It's another day that the operator to go out there and uh, test my skill. To award-winning producer, director, and actor Orlando Jones. Orlando, how you doing, buddy? Hey, sir. I'm good, brother. How you doing? And all the other interesting guests we've had on. Joining us today is director and writer David Ferrier. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show. MMA legend Chael Sonnen joins us today. Keep listening to your show. This is great. Thanks, my friend. Just subscribe to us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. And while you're there, please like, review, and rate us, friends. It helps so much. We also have a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the show. Just visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and see how you can get all of our interviews ad-free and before anyone else and how you can get your business or company spotlighted on the show. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash mikemercado2333. And if you would like to see what we're up to behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, mikemercado2333. Thanks for listening and all the support. What is up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. On this episode of Typing When Tipsy with Nicole Mancha, we go into the vaults and grab an episode of Pizza Night with Nikki and Mike about expectations and friendship, relationships, and everything in between. It's a really good one. So while Nicole is working on a cool project for you guys for the next few episodes of Typing When Tipsy, why don't you go back to our archives and check out this really fun episode? And while you're at it, like, rate, review, and share us anywhere you get your favorite podcast at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube at Mercado Airwaves Network. You can follow me on Twitter at mmercado 233 Three, three, and on Instagram, Mike Mercado 2333. Three, three. Nicole's on Instagram and on Twitter at Typing When Tipsy. You could check out all our interviews ad free and before anybody else with athletes and celebrities at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. And a huge thank you to Much Art Design for powering us here at the Mercado Airwaves Network. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this episode of Typing When Tipsy with Nicole Mancha. Enjoy the show. So, you, I think you brought up a very interesting point before we hit the break. Of when your friends come over, you're not going to tell them to take off the shoes. But at the same token, like I've had friends that where I would be able to walk in their house and I eat in their – just go right into their fridge, right yeah. into their pantry. Just say, you know, hi, mom and dad. You know, even though like obviously, you know, I was just the annoying kid that were friends with their with their children. It's like, you know, you understand these things. But it is interesting the leeway you give friends opposed to family. Oh, for sure. And it's – I, I have always thought it was interesting because I do have a couple friends like Katie's my best friend. You know, we've known each other forever. Like I shouldn't have to tell you to go to, you know, grab water in the fridge. If you're thirsty, go grab it. You know where it's at. You have two legs, like figure it out. And that's how it was my whole life in my house. My mom was like, I am nobody's maid. Get it yourself. Mm. Um, But then we have friends like we do the brunch on Sunday and it's not that I consider them any less of friends. It's just a different relationship that I have because I haven't known them as long where they're like, oh, let us help. What? No, like, don't wash the dishes. Just leave it. I'll take care of it. Don't worry. You know, because you you don't want them to feel like they have to do those things for you, even if they want to. You want them to know, like, this should be a comfortable, relaxing afternoon opposed to hey, you know, you should really get on those dishes, like. <laughs> well, when, is there a moment where you realize, like, this person has moved beyond, like, or you could just sit down and say, like, no, get your ass up, let's go. It's like, when when do they stop being, when do they stop being just friends and, you know, they're still kind of guests, you don't want them to feel like they have to do anything, and when do they become, like, no, I don't care, like. I'm going to, you know, I don't give a shit. I'm going to take a piss with the door open. If you don't want to see it, don't walk by. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's just how your relationship with them kind of moves. Like, I, I feel like I'm very close to certain people because we vacation with them. So you just know everything you didn't need to know about them to be out 
Shout out to Andy. Oh my God, Amy, you are a saint. For uh, do never, never give them dairy. Go ahead, try to but, say something. Tell me I'm wrong, Andy. Go ahead, Andrew Lonsky. But no, it's just like you you find out so many things about people. You have late night talks at you know 10 a.m. or you know we stayed up. The girls stayed up until three o'clock in the morning just talking, and you guys were passed out like that's when I think you kind of cross over that line. And then there are friends that it's not that you're any less close to them. You still consider them a really good friend, but you maybe haven't spent that kind of quality time with them. So it's still that weird space. Like they don't know everything about you. They don't know about your relationship. I haven't gone to them to be like, Hey, Mike really pissed me off today. You know what I mean? Like we have See, for me, anybody who's been friends with me knows that all it takes is a bottle of like Patron or Hennessy <laughs> and we become that type of level friend. Shout out Robert Evans. He had to deal with that many, many, many times. I bet. And Lewis, yeah. Yeah, it was Speaking fun. of Robert Evans, I want my container back. I think he actually texted me and I just never responded <laughs> back to him. So shout out to Robert Evans. <laughs> but yeah, saying. no, I think it's, you know, it's not that you consider them less of friends. It's that if you haven't been on that level with them and it, it's not not that you don't want to be it's sometimes that the opportunity doesn't present time itself. it just it's all about time yeah it really is and like sometimes on, you yeah. have moments like there could be a day away it could be a week away it could yeah, be one party away like, it could be i mean i've had times knows. where like i've hung out with megan and we've gone walking and then just something comes out and i'm like i feel really comfortable talking about it so i'm going to keep talking and you know you get on that level with those people and it's hard to pinpoint it too because like right. especially as again time moves forward and just i think your age has to do a lot with it i was listening to a ted talk about time yep. and it's like one of those things where you just – you really do recognize – like I can't tell you the moment I became friends with Danny. I can't tell you the moment yeah. I became friends with these assholes. Like I don't know anything like that. Like you know, it's – I can't tell you the moment I felt like it went beyond just being brothers and I became best friends with my brothers. Like I don't know when right. those moments happen. Like I can't tell you when my me and my Uncle Jeff became brothers. Like I don't know. Yeah. Like it's hard to really pinpoint it but – that is true like there is moments at some point where you just realize like your comfort level just change right and it just be- it just became a different relationship but speaking of relationships it's the it's the one everybody really has to deal with and i think it's the crux to a lot of different mm-hmm. problems and strengths in a relationship is the expectations and the entitlement and i will use the word entitlement here because you do deserve certain things when you're oh, absolutely. when you're sharing your life with somebody and again this is levels like if you just started dating someone to be married with them for 50 years right. like there is levels to it like if you've been dating someone for a month you can't expect them to know everything right. but if you've been dating somebody for 5 years if you've been with somebody for 5 years you should probably know what their favorite meal is right you know, like that is like something that's minute as that it's like there is an evolution it's my favorite meal mike uh, something very – Brussels sprouts, quinoa. <laughs> quinoa. Uh, uh, what else? What else is very nasty, guys? Oh, Think of some nasty God. foods. Oh, my God. You're the worst. Um, fish, but like not good fish. Oh, my God. Um, what else? You don't like pizza. I love pizza. You don't love steak. You don't, don't love like hamburgers. Steak. You don't I love like french hamburgers. fries. You don't love – basically, you don't love anything good. You're the worst and you're a liar. Oh, this is the second show somebody's telling me, accusing me of fake news. All right, that you know what? fake news. No, move forward. Moving forward. Don't forget it. Alex, we're taking over. We're kicking Mike off. No, you guys have a rivalry, by the way, <laughs> that nobody's seen. So we'll see about that. Um, no, I think relationships are so hard. I mean, I feel like you have these high expectations for someone because you want them to be the best version of themselves. But I also think there are expectations from people who expect you to be the best version of what they want. And that's really different, right? Because you look at it like, oh, well, I want you to be the best version of yourself. Or I want you to be the best version of what I think you should be. But like that's where's the where's that line? And like when does it become fair and unfair? So I think that expectations are dangerous. I think you shouldn't have expectations in the sense of what I expect you to do. I think you need to be open and honest about what you want from them and what makes you happy. And then you also need to learn what type of person they are. It's like the, what I talked to you about that one time, the love languages, like you need to learn what somebody, what speaks to somebody in a certain way. There are times when, you know, I get really annoyed with you or you say something and I feel like it's hurtful, but you don't, I expect you to say, sorry, no, you're not going to say, sorry, but the thing is, is you've said sorry probably three times. 
Well, in, in two years. In the sense of as an initial reaction. Like, once I've had time to think about it right. and I realize that was wrong, I'm going to apologize. But, like, you're never going to get an initial sorry for me. No. Because especially and that's that a time, me thing. No, but, like, it's for me, one of the big things is I, I truly believe – here's the one thing. I'm never malicious and I'm never vicious. I On see, purpose. But, like, even then, like, I never will say somebody's fat, ugly, no. unimportant. I will never diminish anybody. Like – no, but I think sometimes you know what will upset somebody, so you say everybody's it to like, like push that, the, to poke like the that. bear. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm not saying like it's not, but like if we're talking about expectations, like that—that's an, just an example that I like off the top of my head. Like I don't expect you to say sorry immediately. You're just not going to do it, so I shouldn't expect it. That doesn't mean I don't want you to do it. It just means that I know I need to give you time to decide how you feel about a certain subject. I'm definitely more prone to saying I'm sorry right afterwards because I don't like to feel that kind of guilt on me as a person. Maybe I'm a sociopath and I don't feel some of the guilt <laughs> initially. I just also think like I I think I'm very uh, – I think that I come out very much with – and I, I don't say anything just off the cuff. Like it's – I'm never just going to blurt something out. Yeah. Like it's it's an observation and it maybe the thing is like obviously when when it comes to family and relationships like you just know more about people so it's just more blatant but like I talk to, I talk to everybody in a way where they know where I'm coming from. And again, I'm not malicious. I'm very I'm a very kind person, but if I think you're doing something wrong or you know, I feel like you're coming at me in a certain certain tone, I'm going to respond accordingly. Like, I don't like, first of all, I don't raise my voice. No. I I don't raise my voice. I learned this. Shout out to my Uncle Jeff. I've learned one thing. Nothing nothing gets accomplished when you try talking over somebody. Yep. And I'm like, it's, it's been a great lesson in radio. You don't want to talk over anybody. You, want to, you don't want to interrupt anybody. And here's the thing. Your significant other had a parent. Yeah. They've had teachers. They've had a boss. That's not you. There's no need to... To try to, you know, pull some, and I'm not even using this as a, uh, as like nowadays where you hear men trying to be having authority over women, like just in general, like there's no reason to try to want to have authority over anybody. What does right. that ever accomplish? Be having, unless they're your kid, there's no reason you should want authority right. over well, a person. Who was that? Was it Joe Rogan earlier who was saying that people should not have power over people? Yeah, it yeah, is exactly. Not a mm -hmm. good situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it never, it never has no. been. So with that in mind, it's like. I'm never going to make you feel like I know – I'm not telling you something or I'm holding something back. Like, you know, if it's something small like, you know, like I have a coworker who I think eats a bad breakfast and it stinks up the, mm -hmm. the studio. Like, yeah. I don't know, something random like that. Like, I might not bring it up because as long as they have a full belly and they're, they're happy at work, what do I care? Yeah. But if I think that they're showing up to work a little too late or too aggravated or just not in the right zone, right. I'll tell them because you're never not going to know where you're at with me. Right. And I think that's the truth. It's like – I, I think that's more important than anything. And I think that's I, – now, I expect that with people. I expect you to tell me how you feel in front of me. I expect you to know the truth. I expect to know intentions, goals. I don't need to know your deepest th thoughts, but when it comes to our relationship, whether you're my best friend, whether you're a coworker, whether you're my girlfriend, whether you're my father, my mother, my grandparent, I want to know where we're at yeah. and where we're going. And I think it's funny because I think it's just kind of what you learn, right? Because I think with me, there are definitely times where you know I'm frustrated or annoyed or whatever, but I don't want to talk about it and I'm not going to talk about it and you won't bother me for it, even if you know it's with you because you know at the end of the day we're secure because if it was really that big of a thing, I would bring it up. Well, it's, but in, in that scenario, it's just about – with anybody, like using that an example or using, again, a, a parent, using a, a friend. If they're frustrated, whether they're frustrated, upset with you or with another situation and just, they're not ready to talk about it, all you need to do, this is my golden rule, whenever you're ready. Yeah. It's like I'm here. Yeah. It's like I don't have – I may not be the smartest man. I may not have a degree. I may not you know, solve all the world's problems, but the I do have – Certain skills, which is not even skills. I was born with certain things. I have two ears. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's it. It's like, and I have a mind to process. And all of us do this. We have a mind to process. And you take a second to hear somebody out and you allow them to be upset and let them work through their emotions. Yeah. Unless they're going to hurt themselves or hurt somebody, you allow them to work through it. Right. All you can do is be there to help 
And when they're ready to take advice or ready to be yeah. be real with you, that's what it is. But, you know, I I expect that. The one thing is, though, I also – I think the golden rule is whether you agree with somebody or you disagree with somebody, you respect people. Oh, yeah. And I think that's where my rule comes from. I don't, I don't yell at people. Yeah. Because you respect somebody. You treat them like they're people. Because guess what? Like there's nothing – in a world today where we all feel like there's levels of of humanity, yeah. like this is where you belong, this is how people should treat you, it's like, you know, I love Portillo's. Yeah. And they sent out that that tweet after Kanye West and Kim Kardashian had their baby. They named the baby Chicago West. Yeah. So they tweeted out saying, well, in honor of the baby's birth, we're going to give the baby lifetime of free Portillo's. And you see a bunch of tweets from people saying, you know – um, you know, why are you taking care of them? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And, you know, we've been going here. How about you How about you donate that food to schools that don't have right. meals? Like, and, you know, that that's where it comes. Like, all that. The, everybody's due some type of respect. And just because that baby's name, and I don't know it was a baby. Like, it's done nothing to nobody. But that idea of, you know... When the when the royal family has the baby, it's more important. Why is that baby more important than, you know, the baby right now being born in the Alexian brothers? Right. And I think we're all due that the decent humanity of allow that 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 respect, that allowance of just life, the opportunity to have a prosperous right. life. At yeah. least that's 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 the only that's to me is the golden rule of of all of this. Yeah. No. And I and that's the thing. Like I think. I think when expectations come into that disarray or that weird area where you don't really know if they're good or bad is let's say every single day you take out the trash. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's for listeners. That's like Mike's job because I hate taking out the trash. I hate doing a lot of things. I'm not going to lie to you. Like I'm a dirty person, but I hate doing a lot of things. That doesn't mean I won't do it if it's building up. I will. I'll cave. But, like, Mike takes out the trash for the most part. But it's, like, one of those things where let's say you take out the trash every single day. One day you forget. One day it's just sitting there and I come home and I go, well, what the hell? Why didn't he take out the trash? Like, that's it. Those expectations destroy relationships because any relationship you have, there needs to be a give and take. Very interesting. And... Not being able to do it the one time is the problem. There was a post that this guy made on Facebook, and it was funny because I was, like, hearing all these talks and stuff like that. And he was talking about his ex-wife and how when they were married, everything was great and wonderful. They had two kids. It was wonderful. But then he felt like she wasn't attracted to him. All these things basically he ended up having an affair and getting divorced and blah, blah, blah. So he sees his wife later, and he's like, I thought I would be happy when she got into a relationship, and I wasn't. Like, I was actually really upset about it. Because all of the love that I should have bestowed on her and all the things that I expected of her, she went to work. She came home. She cooked. She cleaned. She took care of our kids. She did all these things. But because he wasn't getting attention, he felt like it was part of the expect. That was part of his expectation when not realizing that doing all those things is giving you attention because she could have done none of those things and been like, feed yourself, take care of yourself, do your own laundry, do all these things. Having expectations can destroy things like that because you don't, you focus so much on the little things opposed to the grand scheme of things. Instead of me, you know, let's say you, you came home and you vacuumed and you mopped and you did this. Which I did. And you, you, I know you did, but um, I got, hey, I got the Swiffer, so. For me to use. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for the ironing board for Christmas. <laughs> but, like, what I'm saying is, is you did all that, but you didn't do out the tra- take out the trash. Which I did. Why? <laughs> Fourth wall broken. Can you, can you. Continue with your story. Thank Go you. ahead. The point is, is that I shouldn't look at what wasn't done. You look at what was done. You know what I mean? There. Okay, there, yeah. The the expectations shouldn't be so small and minuscule because it destroys relationships. You know, you the one thing I don't really mind doing for the most part is cooking. If I come home, I don't mind cooking, but I don't mind it. No, myself. you don't. I was just gonna make fun of me. Yeah, you don't mind cooking. You know, you hate cleaning, but you love the cooking part. I don't mind the cooking part. Hey, I put away the dishes today. Dishwasher. The point is, is they made it in the <laughs> Okay, cool. All right, no hate. Because <laughs> I usually just leave it on the stove. Fair so. enough. But the thing is, is 
you could look at it as, oh, great. Exactly what you just said. Like, she cooked, but she didn't put it away. Why does it have to be everything? Right. But if right. you know what I mean? Well, it like, was more for no, a bit, No, I know it right? was a joke, yeah. but, like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But it, that's a good example of yeah. expectations. And, you know, I your schedule, my schedule is very different in the sense of you, you work almost the same amount of hours, but it's in a shorter time frame. So you have three days off. I work Monday through Friday, same time frame, just different hours. So I don't get that same time amount off. It just doesn't equivalent. Now, I, I think that's very interesting because I think something very important in those scenarios too is finding hobbies and staying busy. Yeah. It's like, you know, you don't need attention. You don't need to be all over your wife if like you're too busy fulfilling yourself. Like, look, I like you said, <laughs> I work high giggity, but I work – I work my full 40 in four days. Right. But when I'm quote unquote off, I'm here working at the network. I have interviews every week. I'm right. kind of, I'm doing these shows. You're working out, hanging out with my family, going to watch these movies, you know, just staying, staying up to things. Like I don't have enough time to, to feel down about myself, about yeah. anything. It's like, you're too tired. You, you appreciate the moments you do have the attention you do get. It's like, those mean something it's like there's too much self there's too much selfishness yeah when it comes to that spe uh, specific like yeah. i here's my thing the only thing i ever expect is uh, from you let's say for a relationship like the only thing i expect is honesty I don't, anything else is just the relationship building but honesty is the most important things like do you love me? Don't you? Do you like me? Don't you? Do you hate me? Feel don't like those you? Those are two very different things. I love you all the time. Yeah, right. And then you don't have to like anybody. <laughs> yeah, no, it's so true. But like, what did I tell you? Are all you the into time? it? Are you? Are you? Are you into it? Are you invested? Are you like? Yeah. Honesty is the most important thing, and it's all you know. Some of it's trivial, like just annoyances. Yeah. But like, that's also a person's characteristics. Like right. things that you I find annoying are also some of the things that. And you know. I think it, in relationships, no matter what relationship, you need to remember people aren't mind readers. They don't know what you're thinking or what you want. You know, when I came home today, I think is a really good example. I came home and I walked into the room and I realized we still had laundry. And I'm like, great, still have laundry. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I didn't ask you to do it. So how do you know that I want you to do it? Like, it's, you know what I mean? It's right. things My, like that. And then, like, the counter is, like, had you said something, be like, oh, that's cool. Like, you have a clean kitchen, a clean living room, a clean bathroom. Like, right. it's one of those things where you just, you can't, the golden rule, again, is, like, you, you don't know other people's levels. Like, exactly. you don't know what, like, you don't. Exactly. And that's why, like, okay, one of the lessons I've learned is, like, when somebody walks into the door, you don't hound them. You say, hello, yes. how are you? And you wait for their oh. initial reaction. So when you come home, it's just a very much, like, a wave. How are you? You yeah. let, t why don't you go in and take off your shoes? Take yeah. off your jacket. I like, love, oh. I love my mother. I love her so much. And I don't think she listens. So that's a good thing she right doesn't. now. She, she supports us on Patreon.com slash, she supports us at Patreon.com slash Mercado <laughs> Airwaves. We can listen to all our shows ad free and before anybody else, including our UFC and MMA interviews. And coming soon, another one of our amazing Hollywood, you know, sneak peek, our Hollywood interviews coming later on this week. Yes. We're continuing. But anyway, you don't know anything about it. I either. actually, you don't yeah. tell me anything about it. Scoop, scoop. Because <laughs> you leak things to the media, fake news, continue. That's accurate. Yeah. Um, but no, like I love my mom, but the second you walk in the house, she is a freaking pit bull. Sure. Like, is this done? What is going on? But, and I'm like, what she just my mom. happened? Yeah. Like what? The, I just walked in the door. Can you give me two effing seconds to like figure out my shit right now before you start coming at me with all of these different things? But that's the thing, like with expectations, with this, with that, I also think that, the comparison thing is a really bad idea to start doing like like the whole idea of you know you're like oh well if you said that to me this is what i would say to you yeah that's a really dangerous yeah of course because that's arguing yeah well and you just can't compare because it, you know your thing is well i did this this and this and i'm like yeah but i work extra shifts on the weekends i work 60 hours a week you just, I do this. Yeah, you know what it's I mean? just it's, it's a rabbit starts, hole it's, yeah, it's a rabbit it just hole. goes yeah, down yeah. this place and it becomes an animosity thing and it becomes vengeful when it can be something so simple as you know being like hey i know you're not gonna like it and i know you're not gonna enjoy it but can you th please throw in a load of laundry yeah asking you to do that you may not be thrilled about it but guess what when we have clean laundry everyone's gonna be happy right and I, but i also think like there's there's see like 
there's arguments waiting to happen because, like, to me, chores are, are no big deal. Like, I like doing chores, actually, because it keeps, you, it keeps me busy amongst, like, a lot of people don't understand when you're recording or editing these shows, a lot of time is spent uploading, buffering, and and just right. a lot of it is stuff you got to just wait for. So to me, like, that's why I enjoy doing the vacuuming and cleaning and doing loads of laundry and so, and so on and so forth. But, like, I can imagine somebody who actually – doesn't like doing – or anybody – like if it's something I didn't enjoy and then like having somebody yeah. get mad about it and be like, oh, not only do I have to do something I don't like, but now they're pissy at me. Like that's just Attitude. waiting. Yeah. Attitude. That's, I mean that's, that's another big thing I think when you are talking about relationships with people. Like there are times when I'm like, oh my gosh, I just want to punch you right in the throat because you have an automatic eye roll. Yeah. And your mom said it because the one time we were talking about it and you're like, I don't do that. Your mom's like, oh, yeah, you do. And you're like, you had no idea that you like have this initial reaction. I'm like, that is the most obnoxious thing a person can do is eye roll. But think about it, because you know what? If our nephew did that to you, you'd be like, what is this kid giving me an eye roll? Well, because it's an attitude. But the thing is, it's an attitude thing. Whether you notice it or not, it's completely different. Like to do it and be to do it in a way like to be bratty is very different than it being in you know. No, I get reaction. it. Like it's just, but I think naturally I'm very much like if I don't think something's a good idea, like I'm gonna. But I'm I don't even tell think it's that. I think sometimes it's when you feel like you're being told to do. Something. Oh yeah. Oh well, that's 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 my big thing. Like, don't tell me what to do. Like, I'm I'm a grown man. Like, the government oh, already no. takes a lot of my money away. Like, anybody <laughs> Who ever tell me what to FICA do? Who is and why are they taking my money? Shout out to friends. Also, shout out to Rosa Enriquez. She's been pissy at you for not mentioning her. So. Oh yeah. Are you happy now? Yeah, she's my favorite. Are we done? Is that? You don't have done? to lie. Go move? ahead. Yeah, we can move on. <laughs> yeah. But no, you know, I think it's that whole idea of knowing kind of what you expect from your partner, knowing what you expect from your friends, you know, having those realistic goals. Realistic needs to be a part of that conversation because there are things that you do for somebody that you should just do. Right. And there are things you do for somebody because you want to do them. You don't need a thank you every single time. I mean, I do, but like normal people don't. Right. Yeah, right. No, like, I, but that's the thing, you right? There are some people who need that. There I mean, like, people... I need almost everything. Like, I need, <laughs> I'm the greatest ever. Go ahead. Yeah, but some people need constant validation. Like me. And I think that if you know those kind of expectations, then you're in a better spot. You know, I'll do some things around the house or I'll make things or I'll, you know, put things together because I want to do it. I don't expect to thank you. When I make dinner, I don't expect to thank you. It's nice to get one. I don't expect it because if I'm making dinner for myself, I'm obviously not going to leave you out unless you really made me mad. I don't think I've never made you dinner no. like when we were planning on having dinner together. So like if that ever happens, know the kind of but angry I am. I also <laughs> like I think a lot of it too is politeness. Like I feel like say anything you will about me. I'm very polite. Oh, for sure. It's everyone except, you know, people that you're closest to and you don't feel like it. Yeah, but <laughs> – you're you're a polite person. When Radio Mike comes out, he is the most polite. I hate person. that people think it's a gimmick. It is a gimmick. It's not a gimmick. I mean, it's not a gimmick, but like you're you times like a thousand. Nah, I don't think so. Because like, I mean, I come home and I and like no conversation past that point until what do you want to do for dinner? Because that's literally what we're gonna ask each other until we die. That's the what golden do you want rule. for dinner? What yeah. do you want for dinner? Right. That's so one of the golden rules. I've had a lot of golden rules this episode. <laughs> yeah, you have. But like, it's you know. But that's like that's normal, Mike. Though because it's a normal human thing. I'm a very chatty person, and sometimes I swear to God, you sleep with your eyes open. Like you just you're there, but you're not really there because you're like, yeah. And I'm like, he has no clue what I have said. Which is bull because I actually do. It's it's a gift. most of the time. Well, but I feel like it's like a, it's a you know the general. A, but here's the, yeah because it's <laughs> it's a golden it's another golden rule. When I'm at my job, we're like at twelve now. Yeah, whatever. I'll make a I'll make a list of it. <laughs> um, when I'm at work, so I, I I also work at a broker radio station. So there's a lot of a lot of different shows, a lot of different ethnicities, and the one thing that we check out for is to make sure I run three radio stations. So I have to make sure I'm listening to all three right. at, simultaneously. So like even if I don't necessarily like one may be Spanish, one be English, and let's say one is Ukrainian. Yeah, it's like the two I can understand, the Ukrainian I can't understand, but I'm listening to one. I'm listening to the English and Spanish, and I'm hearing out for for right. the Ukrainian one. The key is when you're saying something, it's all about the inflection. 
Yeah. This is the this is the, this is the superpower <laughs> right here. It's all about the affliction and looking for keywords. So once I realized like, oh, this isn't just something that like she's just trying to vent out. Like just and for anybody, like this is not something they're just trying to vent out. This is something actually like I need to be invested in this. Like yeah. not just invested in the sense like, oh, they're gonna need they're gonna need right. me. They're gonna need something. Like they're gonna need a support, a word back, just you know, full a hundred percent. Yeah. I think that's very important, but you know, I also know that sometimes it's not about what I think. Sometimes it's just like, hey, listen yeah. to my ass, sit there, enjoy. Exactly. And that's with anybody. It could right. be with anybody. Right. It could be with anybody. Right. And I think, you know, there are certain things where I know that you don't necessarily want to talk about. And not even bad things, just like when I talk about apartments and stuff like that. You don't want to because honestly, it like exhausts you before we've even started. And but, like, yeah, it's just I hate – I'm sick – you know, about uh, fourth wall, real world. So it's like we moved a lot recently. So I'm like, I'm kind of sick of moving. And it's one of those things where it's like, there's no fun in it. Like I don't enjoy. You've known this for me about right. me. Like, like I, I enjoy doing certain things, like looking for certain things. But like apartments just really frustrate me. They frustrate because, every. I like. I don't yeah. think I know anybody who after like the first two apartments goes. Oh my god, this is so much fun. It's like, not. No, like, it's really frustrating. There's a lot that goes into and I, it. And, and okay, that's another thing. I have very high expectations for what I'm looking for which in an is, apartment. Which could be because it's a good and a bad yeah. thing. You know, I, I looked at one today for the summer and I was like I came home and I'm like, you know what? I, I love I love the idea of it, but I'm glad I went to go see it because it didn't feel like home. When we walked into our place now, it felt like home. We just need a little more space with the podcast and all that stuff going on. I'd like to be, you know, on the ground floor so we can take Mowgli out easier. Like things like that is just what I'm looking for now. But, you know, it's one of those things It's it, you have to have an open mind. And that's why I start looking so early is so that I kind of get a, a feel yeah. for what I'm looking for. Because then when the time comes, I'm not trying to fit 17 appointments in a week because I'm like, shit, I have three weeks to make a decision opposed to when I can go over the next, you know, four or five months and be like, okay, where do I want to look? What does my credit need to be at? What do we need to have saved, right? Because there are some places that require you to have a security deposit plus that. Having those things sorted out helps make those decisions. But I know it's not something you want to hear because you're like, we still have five months before we need to make a decision. But five months goes really quickly. It's very true. Like, think about how fast the two years. Like, we've been living together for two years now. Yeah. Like, and think about how fast that went. It was glorious for you, I know, and it just flew by oh, because yeah. time flies when you're having fun. That's so. why, yeah, it's so glorious. I didn't realize, like, wrinkles, <laughs> no sleep, gray hair. <laughs> you're so lucky to have me. Nicole, let's pull a bow in this. We'll be back here on Pizza Night with Nick and Mike on Mercado Airwaves. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all of Nicole's work at typingwintipsy.wordpress.com. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, mikemercado2333. Mercado Airwaves is brought to you by supporters at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at Patreon dot com slash mercado airwaves find us on itunes at mercado airwaves keep up to date with the show on facebook at mercado airwaves you can see all of nicole's work at typingwintipsy.wordpress.com you can follow alex on twitter at mercado 21 alex follow mike on twitter at mmercado2333 and on instagram mike mercado2333 What's up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. If you missed any one of our past interviews with amazing guests like future Hall of Famer and pound for pound best fighter in the world, UFC flightweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. It's another day that the operator to go out there and uh, test my skill. To award-winning producer, director, and actor Orlando Jones. Orlando, how you doing, buddy? I'm good, brother. How you doing? And all the other interesting guests we've had on. Joining us today is director and writer David Ferrier. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show. MMA legend Chael Sonnen joins us today. Keep listening to your show. This is great. Thanks, my friend. Just subscribe to us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. And while you're there, please like, review, and rate us, friends. It helps so much. We also have a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the show. Just visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and see how you can get all of our interviews ad-free and before anyone else. And how you can get your business or company spotlighted on the show. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash mikemercado2333. And if you would like to see what we're up to behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, mikemercado2333. Thanks for listening and all the support.
What is up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. On this episode of Typey Went Tipsy with Nicole Mancha, we go into the vaults and grab an episode of Pizza Night with Nikki and Mike about expectations and friendship, relationships, and everything in between. It's a really good one. So while Nicole is working on a cool project for you guys for the next few episodes of Typey Went Tipsy, why don't you go back to our archives and check out this really fun episode? And while you're at it, like, rate, review, and share us anywhere you get your favorite podcast at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube at Mercado Airwaves Network. You can follow me on Twitter at mmercado233. Three, three, and on Instagram, Mike Mercado 2333. Three, three. Nicole's on Instagram and on Twitter at Typing When Tipsy. You could check out all our interviews ad free and before anybody else with athletes and celebrities at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. And a huge thank you to Much Art Design for powering us here at the Mercado Airwaves Network. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this episode of Typing When Tipsy with Nicole Mancha. Enjoy the show. All right, Nicole. Now that I've had enough self-reflection, I realize that I'm aging faster and faster every day in this relationship You're and in this welcome. network. Thank you. You have any last words about uh, this? Is a really fun episode. Uh, we kind of we kind of blew uh, flew through this, and it you know like a pretty meaty episode for for something I thought we were you know we were gonna kind of. Just, I think know, it because it, it got so really many deep. Different yeah. directions. Yeah. I think we got really real with how. I, you know, I'm very open with things, so I always am willing to talk about things that I feel and things yeah. that may have irritated me. And, like, he knew I was irritated earlier, and he was like, I'm just going to let this girl be annoyed and paint her picture. But at the same time, I'm like, yo, let's put it on the radio. I don't care. Right, but, like, that's I don't the care. Thing, but that's what makes it good, right? Mm-hmm. Because then I wasn't feeling it when we started, and then we started getting into it, and I'm like, okay, this is a good time to kind of air out how you feel and mm-hmm. really understand. Sometimes you have to remind yourself where your expectations lay remember right welcome to the radio radio world that's one of the right but it's like you know when you talk about it it reminds you where your expectations lay and reminds you where you need to be and what your mind frame needs to be and is this going to benefit me is it going to benefit him or is it going to benefit us because at the end of the day when you're in any relationship you're in it should benefit the both of you and especially with your significant other it has to be a benefiting us situation Benefiting me, benefiting you is not going to help us move forward in the direction that we would like to go in life. Yeah, very well put, Nicole. I think just in general, it's it, like you said, open communication, being realistic, and just, you know, I think it's just, it, it really is as simple as talking to people and yeah. like, you know, perspective. Realize how good sometimes, and sometimes life is bad, how good sometimes life can be and go from there but um that'll do it for us guys thank you so much for keeping with us this was a really fun episode uh nicole thank you so much you have anything you want to plug anything uh anything you're working on anything like that um so i am actually working on a piece right now and i am going to post it soon uh i'll let you guys know i can put up the link perfect so that you guys can get to it and yeah i'm pretty excited it's kind of something that i've worked on prior to and you're gonna get really busy coming up in the next month yeah so my class starts again for creative writing yeah. i have an internship that i'm doing a lot of like content marketing for and i'm doing content marketing really for work right now so that's it's, cool oh and i'm painting helping paint the office really cool yeah they let me choose the colors so nice. and I gave me the company credit that. card to buy a furniture so Let's just and say coffee on the side. She's, <laughs> she's going to hide the $8. Yeah, but know. yeah, no. So I, uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting the next few months. I'm really stoked to see where we're at. And, you know, hopefully that means that we'll get more stuff going here too. Cool. Sounds awesome. Well, thank you guys so much again for joining us. You can follow us everywhere in the universe. Um, on Twitter, you can follow me at Mercado2333. More importantly, please like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Do us a huge favor over here and listen to us on YouTube. Subscribe to us so you can be up to date with every single one of our videos we're posted. YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado2333. We're on iTunes. Do us a huge favor. This is very important. Like, rate, review, and share. It helps us get up the billboard so people can discover us. That's iTunes.com slash Mercado Airwaves. If you have an Android or Google phone, we have you covered. We have a SoundCloud. SoundCloud.com slash Mercado Airwaves. You can check out all of our interviews, all of our shows right there as well. And, of course, if you want to see anything behind the scenes, we have some cool stuff Nicole's actually working on. We'll post it at Instagram.com slash MikeMercado2333. I really want to give a shout-out to every one of our single producers here at Mercado Airwaves. They support us by going to Patreon.com slash 
Mercado Airwaves. We have two tiers just for you guys right there. One of them, you get any one of our episodes ad-free and before anybody else, before we post it on iTunes, before it's posted on SoundCloud, before it's on YouTube, you get to check out any one of our interviews. We have, we've had UFC Hall of Famers and Champions, Bellator Champions. We've had people in Hollywood. They've been really cool, really gracious to join us on the show, and you can get that before anybody else. Or if you would like to sponsor us, we have a very diverse group of audience guys, diverse group of shows. It's a great place to get your brand. We'll make sure people get to know exactly what's great about your company. Check it out. It's patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Nicole, thank you so much again for taking some time for us this week. Uh, We really enjoyed it. Some great perspective. Any last words? No, I'm super excited for next week. I can't wait, and I can't wait to put some stuff on Instagram and show you guys what we're kind of working on. Cool. Thank you guys so much. Love you. We'll see you next time here on Mercado Airwaves. Night. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all of Nicole's work at typingwindtipsy.wordpress.com. You can follow Alex on Twitter at Mercado21Alex. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, MikeMercado2333. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all of Nicole's work at typingwindtipsy.wordpress.com. You can follow Alex on Twitter at Mercado21Alex. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, MikeMercado2333.
What's up, friends? Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. If you missed any one of our past interviews with amazing guests like future Hall of Famer and pound for pound best fighter in the world, UFC flightweight champion Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. It's another day that at the opera, I get to go out there and uh, test my skill. To award winning producer, director, and actor Orlando Jones. Orlando, how you doing, buddy? Hey, sir. I'm good, brother. How you doing? And all the other interesting guests we've had on. Joining us today is director and writer David Ferrier. Thanks so much, brother. I appreciate you having me on the show. MMA legend Chael Sonnen joins us today. Keep listening to your show. This is great. Thanks, my friend. Just subscribe to us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. And while you're there, please like, review, and rate us, friends. It helps so much. We also have a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the show. Just visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and see how you can get all of our interviews ad-free and before anyone else and how you can get your business or company spotlighted on the show. Follow us on Twitter at mmercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash mikemercado2333. And if you would like to see what we're up to behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, mikemercado2333. Thanks for listening and all the support. 